In this walkthrough, we're going to take a look at how you can onboard new customers using Nintex Workflow Cloud in conjunction with your Salesforce or CRM environment. This workflow will be designed to run when new opportunities are closed in your CRM system so that your onboarding team is aware that a new customer is ready to be onboarded and that your customer is introduced to you as a company. While we will be building this workflow from scratch, if you would like a template of this workflow, you can go to the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery at gallery.nintex.com, select Workflow, make sure that you're in Nintex Workflow Cloud, enter your Nintex Workflow Cloud Tenant ID, and then scroll down to the Onboarding New Customers workflow and download it directly into your NWC environment. Back on the Nintex Workflow Cloud Design Canvas, the first step will be configuring our start event. In this case, we're going to be starting when a record is updated in our Salesforce instance. While I already have a pre-configured connection in my NWC environment, if you would like to create a new one, you can do that directly here within the designer. And we want our workflow to run when opportunities are being updated. In this case, we also want the condition of when the stage has moved to closed one. With our condition set, we do want to get some variables out of our start event. We'll select add variables. And in this case, we want our account ID, contact ID, opportunity ID, and owner ID, as these will be used throughout our workflow. The first action that we'll be configuring for our workflow will actually be used to convert the current date into a more elegant format. To do this, we'll leverage our format date to string action, which we can just drag onto our canvas. We'll set our date to the current date, and then we'll set our format to the month slash day slash full year format. And then we'll give our output date as string the name of current date. As the next set of actions in our workflow are going to all involve interacting with Salesforce, we're actually going to nest all of these within an action set. Action sets are used to logically group different actions on your canvas together so that it's easier to understand where different events are taking place. We'll go ahead and now drag on the actions that we're going to use to retrieve the information from Salesforce. In this case, we're going to use several different retriever records as we'll be interacting with different record types, as well as a query record that will be used to find all of the related product records from our opportunity. We'll go ahead and give each of these actions a detailed name so that not only we know what the actions are doing, but so that any workflow designer in the future also knows what these actions are doing without having to click into their configuration. Within our first retrieve action, we'll go ahead and look for the account related to our account ID that we pulled from our start event, and then we'll get the account name that we can store into a workflow variable. For both the owner info and the primary contact info, we will be using similar steps, though we will be interacting with the user object for our owner and the contact object for our contact. For our owner, we will be getting the first name, full name, and email, and then for our contact, we will also be getting their first name and their email address. With our retriever record actions now configured, we can now take a look at our query record action. We're going to be leveraging the query record action to pull back any of the related products that are associated with our opportunity. To do this, we'll be leveraging the opportunity line item in our specific Salesforce instance. You may be holding your data differently in your CRM, and we'll set the condition of opportunity ID is equal to the opportunity ID that we got from our start event. We're then going to store these record IDs into a collection that is called product IDs. We'll be using the IDs within this collection to identify the names of the different products. Because we want to get back a list of all the different products that have been purchased on this opportunity, we're going to loop through the collection of IDs and get back the various different names. To do this, we will use a loop for each action. We'll pass it the collection of our product IDs, and we will select an output data type of text. This will create a loop for each object that will actually be referenced within our future actions. Within our loop, we will first go ahead and use another retriever record to get back our product names. We'll then go into our collection operations and use the add item to collection to build a collection of those item names, and then we'll use a calculate value to increase the index of this loop. 
we'll again remember to give our actions a detailed name. And then within our retrieve product names, we'll say our object will be our opportunity line item. From within our loop for each product ID, we'll get our current item, which will be that ID. And then we'll get our opportunity product name as that outputted value. We'll then go ahead and add our newest product name to our purchased products, which will be a new collection. We'll create a brand new index variable. Our value will be our product name and we'll put this back out as the purchase product. This means that every time that it loops through, it will add each subsequent product name to this collection. And finally, we'll use the calculate value action to increase the index of that purchased products collection. At this point, we now have a collection of all the different names of the products that have been purchased. To turn this collection of values into a list, we're going to leverage the regular expression action. We'll go ahead and supply our collection of purchase products as the input text. We'll use an operation of replace and this specific pattern here. Note that there is a space after the Z. We'll go ahead and say our replacement text is just going to be an empty string. And then we'll finally store these results out into a text variable that is just going to be our product list. This list of purchased products can then be used within the custom welcome package that we're going to build next. Now that we've gotten all of our information from Salesforce, we can go ahead and collapse our action set and let's give it a more defined name. Next, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the create a record action to create an onboarding case for our onboarding team for this new customer. Our object will just be a case record. This is what we use in our CRM. You may be using a different type of object for tracking onboarding. We'll go ahead and supply the business hour ID that's required in our organization. Again, it may not be required in yours. And then we will use the dynamic values that we've gotten throughout our workflow to populate the account ID, case type, contact ID, owner ID, priority, subject, and status. And then finally, we will store the ID of this onboarding case into a new variable that's just called onboarding case ID. With our onboarding case now created, it is time to start looking at how we can generate a customized welcome package for this new customer. To do this, we'll use the document generation action. In this example, our connector is going to be box, as this is where we are storing the template for our welcome package. If you would like a copy of the template that we're using in this example, you can find a reference to it in the description of the template inside of the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery. We'll go ahead and select our file path as well as our output path. In this case, we're going to give it a dynamic name of the account name and then welcome package. We'll then store the welcome package files into a new collection variable. In this case, we'll call it welcome package files. And then we'll actually leverage a get item from collection to extract out the individual file of our single welcome package. Finally, we want to send a pair of emails. One will be going to the customer, welcoming them as a new customer of our organization. And the other will be going to the onboarding manager, letting them know that this new opportunity has closed, the welcome package has been delivered, and that their onboarding case has been created. For both of these, we'll leverage the send an email action, and we can configure the message bodies with some customized text for those individuals. In both cases, we will want to attach the welcome package as an attachment. And once we're all done, we can then publish our workflow. Now, let's take a moment and see how this would actually run when an opportunity is closed in Salesforce. Here in my Salesforce environment, I have an opportunity that's just about ready to be closed. They have a gold management package that they're going to be purchasing. So let's go ahead and close this and watch as our workflow runs. We can then jump back to our workflow instance details and we can see that the workflow has kicked off and that it is now created an onboarding case and is generating our welcome package. If we jump back to Salesforce, we should now see that onboarding case. We can see that our new record has been created and looking back at our instance details, we can see that our welcome package has now been generated and the emails have started to be sent. So if we jump over to our email, we can see the email start coming in. We can see the reference to the onboarding case. And then we can check out the welcome package that has been automatically created for our team.
I hope this walkthrough has shown how easy it is to start automating even complex business processes within your CRM using Nintex Workflow Cloud. Please make sure to visit us at the Nintex community and check out our other walkthrough videos. We can't wait to see what you build next.